My name is Christian Mercado, and today I will be sharing with you all my study about the impact of different recording environments on pop artists' performance. Um, here is a uh, quick overview of what I will discuss today, a quick intro with some background research, as well as my research questions, the methods I applied from the creation of my stimuli to the analysis of my data, and also I will be sharing my um, findings as well as the conclusion I came to. All right, so we all know that high charting tracks received their attention or are enjoyed or are being enjoyed with consumers for a bunch of different reasons. And one of the biggest reasons is because of the, par the performance of the artist. Um, people can be attracted to a song because of the track's exceptional performance. And this is because the artist's contributions are the most discernible on a record. Now, in addition to that, the quality of the recordings are usually attributed to the artists. So not the engineer, not the producers, or the lyricists or the composers, but um, the artists. Since the performance is the most discernible on the track, a couple of factors must be applied in order to elicit a performance from artists. An example is social facilitation. And this is a concept where the presence of an audience can enhance or facilitate a performance. Another example is a producer's artistic involvement. And this is, uh, this is an artistic direction from a producer and their collaboration with the artists. Um, and it's been proven impactful in creating the best possible outcomes. Now, um, with all that in mind, I asked, how does different studio recording workflows impact the performance of pop artists? And more specifically, are listeners of the genre able to identify which performance had the best outcome? If so, how would listeners from various levels of musical training describe their favorite version? All right, so to create my stimuli, I had my friends over at Basement 732 help me out and record two pop cover tracks. The pop tracks were Circles by Post Malone and Gravity by John Mayer. We then um, recorded this in two different contexts or environments. Um, we hosted a mini show in Studio One University of Lethbridge and had around 10 to 12 people come that day and enjoy the show. And this is our live version where it was just one raw take um, with just the, bland, just, just the band playing uh, for the audience uh, with no coaching from me whatsoever. And um, um, at the end result, um, obviously I just did some minor balancing of the in instruments, um, nothing major on the mixing side of it. And we also created an edited version where the artists and I, um, as a producer of the song, collaborated in how we would want to present the song. So this version um, includes several takes and specific musical ideas that we all wanted to, to present in the final product. And this also includes um, some major mixing. All right, so to answer the research questions, I created an online survey through Qualtrics and embedded SoundCloud playlists to present my stimuli. So if you can see here, this is an example of a playlist I presented paired with a multiple choice question about which track they think is the best, as well as a why question underneath here. I don't know if you guys can see my pointer, um, where I asked the participants to kindly provide a detailed reason for their preference. The tests and order of the songs in each playlist were also counterbalanced to avoid any bias. And so here's a little bit of what the participants had in their playlists. And also feel free to jump in or um, uh, type in the chat if you guys have a preference of your own. And um, so this is the edited version for the first song.
and this is the live version of the same song. So if you guys could type in the chat, if you guys had any preference or if you guys perceived any differences in that, that would be great. You know, just please let me know. And this is the second song's um, edited version. Oh, twice as much, ain't twice as good, and can't sustain, like one of good, it's morning more. Send me to This is the live version of Gravity. Oh, twice as much, ain't twice as good, and can't sustain like one of good. Just wanting more, it's gonna send me to. I see some responses here in the chat. Thank you guys for responding. I see, yeah, thanks guys. All right, so um, moving on to participant recruitment, I managed to recruit 21 people to participate in my online survey. Now these participants come from a wide range of musical training and activities. Also to give you an idea, the range that I recorded were from two um, to 25 plus years of formal musical training. Um, there's, from the responses I recorded, it was a range from being an undergrad student, undergrad music student, to being a professional in their field. Also, it is important to note here that my intent from the start was to not have the audience that I had in my live sessions to participate in the survey. And this is due to the mere exposure effect where the presence can be enhanced due to repeated exposures. Now, oh, I am aware that this effect can subside in a month or so, but I just wanted to really make sure that I completely avoid any possibility of a bias. For me, the audience's purpose um, was to simply trigger social facilitation. So very simple here, to find out which version was the favorite, I simply just counted and totaled the responses. Um, on the other hand though, I used phrase extraction for the participant's description and later grouped them into criteria to determine the factors that make a pop track enjoyable. Um, as we can see here, this is a coding scheme I did 
to determine the criteria used by the participants. And in return, I came up with uh, categories like mix, upbeat or time, arrangement, vibe, laid back, lead elements, and cohesion. And if we take a look at the examples here for the phrases, so phrases like, um, I prefer this version's mix, um, it sounds more polished, it sounds more balanced, they obviously fell in the mix category. If we take a look at uh, some phrases over here, um, when my participants said uh, B sounds more in the pocket or this version sounds more in the pocket, sounds tight overall or it's more cohesive, then it obviously fell here in the cohesion category. Now with that said, the results were 69% um, preferred the edited version here and only 31% actually chose live. Now the reoccurring criteria used to describe why edited was the best were um, if you could bear with my graph here, on the left side, we have song one, right side song two, and the lighter colors or the lighter shades um, are the edited versions. So according to my participants, the reason why they preferred the edited better is because of the mix, the arrangement, the lead elements in it, and uh, the cohesion. Now, these responses, um, um, also had a uh, disliked side of it or a non-preferred side of it. So these are the results from the responses I received regarding the participants' dislike track. Now, these responses are from the ones who decided to give feedback regarding the track that they did not like. So uh, just to note that not everyone had a negative comment on their um, non-preferred track. So as we can see here, 79% of the negative responses were towards the live version. And this is because of the live version's mix and the lead elements. So concluding here and circling back to my research question, um, how does different studio recording workflows impact the performance of pop artists? Well, results show that even though live sessions can convey a better vibe, certain areas like arrangement, cohesion, and lead elements were in need of some sense of uh, direction in order to display the best possible performance in pop music. Now, with that said, the edited versions that were artistically directed by the producer uh, proved to be the solution that enhanced the criteria missing or lacking from the live versions. Overall, a producer's artistic impact outweigh the benefits of an audience present live context in drawing the best possible performance out of artists and pop music. And that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you for listening. And um, if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Thanks. Great presentation, Chris. And thanks for staying on time. I think you did. Yeah, for the first time. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I acknowledge it. Very good job. <laughs> Okay, uh, comments, question. I see that you get some uh, positive feedback on the chat, but some people would like to share them. Maybe some people from the band. I saw that Matthew Erdman was part of the audience. So maybe. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Matt. Uh, killer yeah, bass, okay. As so always. If you guys have something to say, that would be great to have your perspective as musicians on this. Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. Just jump in, open your mic. Or type in the chat, that would be good too. Is, am I on? Oh yeah, I'm on. Am I on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, that, that was neat seeing those responses because uh, being in there, uh, you don't really pay attention to what the audience is doing necessarily, but you know, sure. the, definitely if they uh, enjoy the vibe of the live, that's that's pretty good to hear from a musician. So. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. I guess there were... Um, um, certain areas that, um, you know, if when it was just us that we couldn't recreate, you know, things like vibe. Um, not really sure how to create that or recreate that just yet. But um, again, yeah, thank you for for your help, man. Oh, thanks for having me. It was a uh, it was a lot of fun, like listening to the to the live ones. I'm hearing all my mistakes and stuff. <laughs> no, so no, don't worry about pretty... it. <laughs> well, okay, but uh, yeah, very very cool stuff. I. I... Really, really appreciate you having me on here. Thanks. Thank you, man. And Chris, you mentioned another performer was also part of the audience. 
Sorry, what was that? You mentioned that another person, another performer was part of the audience? No, no, um, I'm not sure here. Um, I think only Matt is here. I'm trying to see the list. And I'm curious, is there anybody who was part of the audience? Oh, that's here? Um, um, I do not see anyone. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe uh, Mike. Um, I think Mike um, came through for the live session. Mike, do you have any comments? He's Mike. Oh, sorry, I was muted, sorry. Yeah. Um, I just find it more interesting uh, that, um, because personally for me too, like, when I record myself, um, I get nervous uh, when, like, performing, but uh, when, when, when there's an audience that's watching me, I, I usually tend to perform better. So I was just... For sure. Yeah. So and also, like it's, yeah, it was very interesting doing this in, in the pop genre because um, just to share with you guys, when uh, on the process of this or the very beginning of, of this project, um, I was asking around and, and uh, guys would always tell me, Oh no, I think oh uh, I think I definitely prefer the live version, man. Definitely, definitely live version for sure. But um it was very interesting to see that um the edited somehow or the collaboration between me and the artists were somehow um a better. Uh not I'm not, I'm not saying uh I'm not i I'm not saying a definite statement, but um but, you know it was interesting to see. Yeah, and, and on the uh, on the live versions too, where we where we didn't necessarily have an audience, it was a lot more I find we experiment a lot more with yeah. our, our grooves and our things and, and and just, you know, having an audience, it makes you sort of remember your role in the band. Mm. And, and like for me on bass, like, yeah, I have to hold these things down. I can't really be doing like too much crazy stuff all the time, but, but that kind of cuts through in the live stuff too, I think. And, mm. but yeah, it definitely affects having an audience. Definitely like, yeah, it feels for like sure. it affects, yeah. Yeah, I guess I should have shared more of of uh, where I um, had this ex had this inspiration from. It was mostly from Amandine's counter uh, counter paper to Shoda and Adachi's paper regarding live versus edited as well. But it was in uh, a piece by Schumann, and the result for that, just to quickly share, is um, they preferred uh, th the live versions better. Um, and Amandine did a um, counter paper. Um, for the same genre, but with the edited versions preferred that time. So it was really, really interesting to see. Yeah, my idea was that the first paper was not taking into account what producers do. Yeah, definitely. Because they didn't have a producer, basically. So it was, mm -hmm. the idea was to try to show the audience that, yes, it's, it's great when you have an audience and you play live, but producers can do a certain type of job that not necessarily replace an audience, but create a different environment that can also be productive and fruitful and artistic, so. For sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, no, oh, great job, uh, Chris. I think you did very well. And uh, Georg, uh, just to give you a, um, the idea, like the, the papers that Chris mentioned are the one that I'm hoping to publish with better analysis if you want oh, to collaborate no. okay yeah. okay oh, i get the frame yeah okay yeah and we may be able to include the uh, chris paper if he if he pursues and publish so we see that's that's great oh, yeah. thanks. thanks yeah